Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. So today we are going to put two mid-sized trucks head to head. We have the 2023 Honda Ridgeline RTLE, which is pretty much the top trim level. There's the black edition package, but the RTLE is the top trim level. We are going to compare it to the latest generation for the Toyota Tacoma. This is a TRD Pro. So we'll put both of these trucks head to head and you can see the main differences and some of the similarities between both of these trucks. So let's start off with the power plants for both of these trucks. On the Ridgeline, you get a three and a half liter V6. This is paired to a nine speed automatic transmission. It pumps out 280 horsepower, 262 pound feet of torque. Now the Ridgeline is all wheel drive full time. So you have that system and you only get that automatic transmission. Over on the Tacoma, this has a three and a half liter V6 as well paired to either a six speed automatic or six speed manual. And this pumps out 278 horsepower and 265 pound feet of torque. So honestly, we're talking a few numbers differences between both of these trucks. As we move on to the exterior styling and design for both of these trucks now, first off, let's just talk about the height difference. You can see the Tacoma is slightly higher in general than on this Ridgeline. And for the front end, you can see some tech features like the forward facing camera, the adaptive cruise or the sensor is in the lower section there. And then we have the fog lights, LED headlights, TRD Pro is stamped within those headlights too. And then we have the front bumper valence and a skid plate underneath. The Tacoma is one of the best mid-size trucks to take off the pavement. For the Ridgeline, some of those features are not there. We have a massive grill. We do have the forward sensor, which I like is a lot more better incorporated than on the Tacoma. We have some cutouts in the lower section, fog lights, turn signals. We even get some aerodynamic cutouts. So the Ridgeline is a little bit more fuel efficient because it has some of those aerodynamic characteristics that the Tacoma is lacking, but the Tacoma makes up for it with the off-road performance. Now for the hood, you can see simple Honda hood. For the Tacoma, you get that hood scoop and that graphic as well. So let's move on to the side profile where the biggest thing you'll notice about the Ridgeline is if I stand right here and you look this way, we pretty much have a Honda Pilot, Honda Odyssey. It's based off of one of those two platforms. So we pretty much have a minivan with a pickup on the back. Now for the rest of the side, you can see some of the plastics, nice set of wheels. Of course, you can get some lower trim levels, which will have some different um, accents or features, things like that. We have the chrome trim pinstripe running down it, and we do have a five foot bed. That is the only bed available for this Honda Ridgeline. Now, as we work our way to the Tacoma, being the TRD Pro, it's off-road focused. What I've noticed though, is a lot of the TRD Pros are coming with the body colored fender flare option. So you saw the plastic over on the Ridgeline. We have a little bit nicer of a design. You can still get plastic, of course. Much smaller wheels that are capable for off-road performance. We have the TRD tuned suspension as well. Some other body colored accents. So it's just your preference between whether you want the chrome or you want all the body colored accents. And then as far as some of the off-road specs go, for the Tacoma, you're looking right around nine inches or so for the ground clearance. On the Ridgeline, it's closer to seven and a half. And then for the approach breakover angle and departure angle, on the Tacoma, it's 36.4, 26.5, and 24.7. For the Ridgeline, it's 20, 19, and 19. So significantly more for the Tacoma. However, with this truck too, you can get a six foot bed option. The TRD Pro only allows you for the five foot bed. So both of these trucks are very similar in that aspect, uh, but you can get a longer bed. The bed debate between five foot versus six foot. Now, as we work our way to the rear, let's stick over to the Tacoma here where we have Tacoma stamped. That's pretty, not really new, but a lot of trucks have their uh, name in the lower section there. We have the body colored bumper, backup camera sensors. We have a towing capacity of 6,500 pounds. Because this truck is body on frame, like most other pickup trucks, for the minivan over here, this is a unibody construction. So it's towing is 5,000 pounds, which is still pretty adequate. But for the rear end, it's a lot more plain. We have the stuck on logos there. Backup camera with all the sensors, however, though, and then a dual exhaust system. But as we work our way to the bed space, this is where I give Honda some props with the situation that they have going on. We don't have the soft opening tailgate, so you do have to open this up, however. And we do have a little bit shorter of a bed, but you'll see why this has that design in just a little bit. So we still have a capable five foot bed. You can place items here as needed. However, 
if you have the bed full of stuff, let's say you wanna go dirt biking, mountain biking, whatever, you have all those items on the upper section, you can take all of your gear with you, tools, whatever you have, and put them underneath. Because this has the independent rear suspension, you can fit a spare in here and just load this up, and it's lockable too. We do have that soft opening tailgate, which I think is a plus. I think every pickup, including the Ridgeline, should have that. Now in this truck, it does have an aftermarket cover. We have the tailgate extender there, uh, but it is a much deeper truck. So you can put in some larger items and just have a little bit more security, I'll say. Uh, this has a power outlet in the back too, so you can actually hook up tools and not just bring them with you. You can actually use them in the Tacoma. And so that is a look at the exteriors. Let's make our way to the interior, but we do have leather for the seats, all of the TRD Pro embroidery. We have the touchscreen system, a cruise control, pretty much everything that you would need, all of the controls for the sliding rear glass, the electronically controlled transmission button, which you can use in the automatic. You can get the manual, like I mentioned earlier. I think it's a nice setup. A lot of people think it's old school, which it is in a sense, um, but then you compare it to the Honda Ridgeline, a 2023, and I will say we have a nice interior. We have leather, we have the heated seats. We have a lot of the same controls. However, I feel like there's just not much as much technology as in this Tacoma. You have navigation, you have a touchscreen system, that's pretty much it. But let's work our way to the back seats now, where in the Tacoma, it is known for being a little bit tight. So at five foot 10, I could adjust this front seat so it is a little bit farther back, but I have maybe a half inch, inch or so above my head, and the seats are pretty upright. I mean, I've been in the back of my truck before, it is tight, uh, but it is doable as well. And then as far as interior space goes, you have these compartments underneath both seats. So this goes all the way to the passenger side. There's even more storage behind both backrests. You have a lot more over that on that one because we have the upgraded JBL audio sound system. If you don't get this, all of this is open space, just like on the other side. Now in the back of the ridge line, this is where it gets a little bit more spacious and comfortable. I have about three or four inches now above my head. Seats are very nice. So if you're looking for more of a practical style pickup truck, you have the space you also get the flip up seat. So it's a little bit easier to gain access to this amount of storage. No storage space behind the backrest though, but it is nice to have that space there. So there is a look for the exterior and interiors for both of these mid-sized trucks. Now let's get them on the road and see the differences in how they drive. So as we set off now in the Tacoma, I'm going to put it into the sport mode and from second gear, we'll give it an acceleration. And not the quickest truck, of course. It's not meant for a zero to 60 runs, but you do have plus and minus there along with that ECT power button. If you need to shift yourself, if you're towing, you can utilize that just to keep the truck in a higher gear. So I really like that, being able to adjust that if you don't have the six speed manual. But as far as driving this now, you're in a pickup truck. You sit up pretty high, we have that hood scoop that you can see over, but it gives you a good presence while you're going down the road and it gives you a lot of visibility. We have a pretty thin pillar here. You can easily see over a left and right just because of how open it is. But as far as this seating position goes, seats are a little bit short in this model underneath my knees there, uh, but you can get this in a comfortable position. We have the automatic seats so that way you can dial them in. It's not crazy loud on the inside. I daily drive my Tacoma. It's, it's pretty normal and what you would expect. For this TRD Pro, we do have the upgraded exhaust, so that makes it a little bit louder, just depending on your preference. Obviously, you can change that if you need to. And then real quick, looking at this dash here, I really like the setup. It gives it a good vibe for this interior, especially with the trim work that makes its way to both sides. And then all of these controls are laid out very well and it is easy to go through. So as far as driving the Tacoma goes, it's very nice. It's definitely a doable as a daily driver, comfortable, quiet, little bit bumpy I'll say, because we do have that solid rear axle. But aside from that, very nice place to be. And as we switch over to the Honda Ridgeline, we are in sport mode. We have the paddle shifters this time. We'll give it some gas. 
I definitely feel that this is quicker, which is weird to say because on paper, this is a little bit slower, but it seems that the paddles are a lot more responsive than just using the shifter on the Tacoma. So I like the power delivery that this truck has to offer over the Tacoma. And I will say the throttle response is a little bit better. The Tacoma, it's not quite the best for the automatic, but I do like in the Ridgeline here, I like the power, I like how usable these paddles are. So if you are towing, just like in the Tacoma, you can hold a gear if you need to do that. Now, as far as the seating goes for this Ridgeline, like I said earlier, it's based off of the Pilot or the Odyssey. So you are basically sitting in an SUV minivan platform. It's a lot much, a lot lower than in the Tacoma. You don't sit up as high. I feel like I'm kind of sunk down where the uh, hood is a little bit higher, where on the Tacoma, I was a lot more upright being able to see over most of the hood. So you kind of sink down a little bit, has that car vibe to it. But for visibility, you actually have a little bit better visibility because you have another window right there. That pillar is much smaller. So for parking lot situations, things like that, it is a little bit easier to see out of this, even though you kind of sit down a little bit. And I will say these seats are a lot more comfortable. We have the adjustable armrest to turn these into captain's chairs and they feel like they're a little bit longer underneath my leg there. So I will say it's, it's a more comfortable place to be. The Tacoma is much more of a rugged style truck, whereas this is going to be more of a commuter style vehicle. So if you just need something that has that open bed, but you don't wanna sacrifice getting an actual pickup truck, you can hop into the Ridgeline and kind of get the best of both worlds. It's very quiet. There's an Odyssey in front of us. It's very quiet, very smooth. You can hear the engine more so than the exhaust because there's no upgraded exhaust like on the Tacoma. This is a quiet, comfortable, another Odyssey, popular Honda vehicle. And as far as the interior goes real quick, you saw in the Tacoma, I do prefer the interior of the Tacoma more. I feel like this screen is way too tilted back. It needs to be brought up a little bit more vertically, but the controls underneath it are laid out well. I like the buttons in the Tacoma just because it's three buttons and you know what to do. A little bit more going on here, but you do get the rear climates, which is not available in a Tacoma. So final thoughts between both of these mid-sized trucks, they have a similar starting MSRP, right around $45,000, $46,000. With the Tacoma, you get more of that rugged style truck, more capable as far as towing, being able to go off-road. You have that body on frame construction to make this a true truck in a lot of people's eyes. For the Honda Ridgeline, you have that unibody construction. It's a little bit more of a, a city type of vehicle, I'll say. You have a lot more practical storage in the bed space with that cargo area, a little bit more comfortable back seat area too. So it just depends on what you're going to be using this truck for. If you want something a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more laid back in a sense, where you need that open bed space, or you want a little bit more capabilities and the option to go with that six speed manual transmission. So comment down below for 45 grand, which truck are you taking home? Let me know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed today's video, give it a huge thumbs up. I also have full detailed reviews of a Honda Ridgeline and a TRD Pro. So you can check out more of the details on each of these trucks and consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on our daily uploads. I will see you all in the next video.